just got the fingering wrong at the top there. that little little tiny mistake it got yourself a little bit off off your center and then it got a little bit faster as you came right in. yeah um that that points to the idea of when anyone including myself makes a mistake you have to get yourself back to normal respirations and neutrality i was gonna say net neutrality perfect <laughs> student neutrality you know um so i you always i struggle with it too you know you make a mistake oh darn it and then you get all tight so we want to try one more time the big one Stay very calm. Stay very calm again on that last playing. That would be forte staccato, piano staccato. to your kind of stability of your playing came back. So that's always good. Um, now, I think what we should try in our new kind of way of looking at scales is the next stage is to try to develop a double of the last speed or maybe yeah. just think about what the what the new uh, peak might be that you can control. Um, maybe something like or I'll do the natural. <laughs> So let's see if we could take the right hand for a minute and get the natural into this new peak speed. Deedle, leedle, 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 leedle. Very good, because you lightened your arm weight so nicely and you just floated along your doubles and triples. Let's hear the left hand uh, do that too, and this separately. Pretty good. Now put both ends together with that now. wanted to, uh, to do a spot practice on where the glitch kind of occurred on that turnaround. Um, yeah. Maybe you want to do two octaves before that so you don't go back to the beginning. Good. That would be a good way to do it. And that was well done. Now go take the whole thing up and down again. great and you have a nice curve around at the top too you don't have any angles at the top now what about if I asked you to snip that out into a staccato and just stay close to the keys and just snip your fingers out at the ends Excellent. And it looks like you're just bouncing along and, and having the benefit of the rebound effect and no impact on the keys. That's incredible. Now, let's say you wanted to do uh, that a little louder, but still yeah. snip your fingers. You'll have a little more arm weight through it. Because I want to see like if we could do the real soft one and make a real difference, a staccato to the louder staccato. So now show me what the louder one would be just using arm weight, but snipping fingers. 
if you know what I mean. We do that a lot, don't we? really great it goes to show you just you know using the energy that's in the universe to take you up and <laughs> now on the so what i think you should do on the others is the same thing we'll, we'll just uh, assign that to to the same speed for the harmonic and the um, melodic first you do it the regular way to get into the keys and warm yourself up and then let's look at the um um, we didn't do that in any other way, did we? Did we do any contrary this week? No, no not contrary. No, I think they are pet you. Maybe you can just add this week just the, this form, the natural form, contrary. Oh, yeah. Talking to a student today about how you use your body when you go to the outer range of the keyboard. Mm -hmm. Do you find, do you, and I was noticing if you did that, as you go to say the toward the last octave, do you go toward the keyboard with your body and then kind of attract? I want, I'd like to see that because I think it gives you more security. We do the same thing with arpeggios when we go contrary motion. We go like toward mm -hmm. and then we come back up. So let's try that with the staccato, okay? Okay. your body you know mm -hmm. we do that when we play mm -hmm. in general see if you can make the triplets uh, again go horizontal and longer groups like this change the fingering so we have two, one, two, four, one, two, four in the right hand, right? Two. Make sure the first note doesn't fold down, but it's rolling in three notes. Rolling, two, rolling, two. So let's go back to slower. Two. Two, three, one. Yes. Actually, it makes more sense. 
Yeah, it does. Because you have because you have bigger blocks of one, two, four. One, two, four, one, two, four. If you do it this way, it's more shift, you know, you get this. Yeah. At, at the top, it's mostly at the top where you have an awkward mm -hmm. ending. Whereas here you have just one, two, four at the top, right? You just directly. But it you know, some teachers teach both because they teach a student, well, you should be able to do different fingerings. So we could try both fingerings just because you should be able to do different fingerings. So if you did this one, you would do two, three, one, two, three, one. And at the top, two, three, one, three, one, three, two. We'll double that, see what happens. And we'll do the staccato. If you wanted to triple speed that, mm -hmm. it would be hard because mm -hmm. you have extra shift. Yeah, like two, three, one, three, two, three, one, three, two, three, one, three. Two, three, one, three. That's hard. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm going to go to the other fingering, the two, one, two, four. interesting to see if the other fingering works. I doubt it will be that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one makes more sense. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, right at the end. Mm -hmm. Exactly.